part three preparing for martial law four hits and knowing how to deal with it when it gets here uh let me go to this next order executive order 12 919 directs various cabinet officials to be constantly ready to take over virtually all cabinet officials to take over all aspects of the u.s economy during a state of national mercy at the direction of the president See, it, oh, let me get to I, I'm going to preach in a minute. Uh, 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 Executive Order uh, 13010 directs FEMA to take control over all government agencies in time of emergency. FEMA, under control of the executive branch of government. Now listen, i got news for you. It directs cabinet officials to be constantly ready to virtually take over all aspects of the U.S. economy during a state of national mercy. Heck, they already done, done that. They voted for the bailout when we didn't want it. That's taking over. My God, man, I mean, they already implementing this stuff. They just seeing that just how much they can do, and they do have a moral standard, as uh, Lindsey Williams has said. And I tell you, I like Lindsey Williams. He's been dead on a lot of people criticize that Baptist minister or missionary, but buddy, he's been dead on it when he told you all was going to fiftieth, don't went below that. See, so you know you got these soothsayers and these false prophets out there that say send your two hundred dollars and we'll give you your healing. Give me a flipping break. If you sick, any one of you sick, let him ask uh, uh, and pray to God that he'll be healed. Call for the elders of the church to lay hands on him. The only problem it is. Is, is what I found is most of the elders are more corrupt than the sick man, glory to God. So you just pray to God that you'll be healed and take your vitamins and, and, and let God deal with the rest of it. Okay? But anyway. Anyway, let me move on. Executive Order 12, 656, Assignment of Emergency Preparedness Responsibility. National emergency is an occurrence, including, watch, national disaster, military attack, technological emergency, or other emergency that seriously degrades or seriously threatens national security of the United States. Well, hell, fire. Excuse my language. My God, we knew that years ago. But it seriously threatens the United States. Well, my God, that's the government. They're the threat. The, the government's the threat, not us. They're the threat. We're law-abiding citizens. Law-abiding to the Constitution and the Bible. The government's the threat, not us. They need to wake up and smell the coffee, man. But in any event, they're not. Their doom's already been sealed. They've already sealed it. They, they know they sold their soul out for the money and the elite power for a season, okay? But surely they have their reward. I can guarantee you that. You can write that in the stone and you can carry it down there to Georgia and put it by the guide stone, baby. Uh-huh. In any event, let me move on. Okay, this order includes federal takeover of local law enforcement agency, wage and price controls, prohibits you from moving assets in and out of the United States, creates a draft, controls a travel in and out of the United States and much more. Did you know this? Now, I, I'm, I want you to look this up. Did you know there's a constitutional free zone, 100 mile border around this United States? Constitutional free means that they don't have to adapt or go by, not that they do anymore anyway, but that, uh, yeah, it within 100 miles of the border that, that uh, they don't have to go by no laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look it up. Look up the constitutional free zone and see what you find out. I don't have time to do that right now, but look it up. It's, it's an eye opener, but uh, in any event, let me move on. Martial law can be declared due to natural disasters, stock market crash, no electricity, rights, biological attack, anything leading to the breakdown of their law and order. Okay. Now, I just went over that with you. Uh, you can, uh, you can, it's easy to look this up, man. It's easy to look it up. Just Googling martial law and do you some studying. Now, some of it out there is a bunch of fruitcakes telling you that you shouldn't uh, defend your home and you should hide your stuff and all this. And that may be the way he wants to go. That's his business. My uh, thing uh, that I believe is that we should defend and fight for our freedoms. If we don't, we got nothing left. You might as well stick your little hands out and go to walking up the road right now and pray and hope to God that uh, uh, Blackwater or some of them go ahead and arrest you and drag you over and get the torture over now, you see, if, if that's what you want to do, but not me. I, 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 I'm going to defend uh, my family and uh, my neighbors and uh, the Constitution until I draw my last breath. It's just that simple. See? You see what I'm saying? But having said that, watch this. You need to become self-reliant and prepare for martial law before it comes, okay? You, you, look, you don't want to become subject to a bureaucrat, bureaucratic bunch of junk that may give you a daggum uh, can of Campbell soup and a, and a cup of water once a week from a FEMA camp. You don't want to do that, man. You want to be self-reliant. You understand what I'm saying? There'll be people down the road that, that uh, have uh, come under misfortune and they can't be reliant. Buy you enough stuff for you and them too and help them out. Make sure they ain't a mole or a turncoat and help them out. You see what I'm saying? Now listen, uh, they, it, may, it may get that, uh, that uh, you know, there may be mob rule, chaos, panic, breakdown of law and order. Survival situation will be easy to handle in rural areas rather than urban. My God, man, I wouldn't live in the city for it. 
You couldn't give me the whole city of Atlanta, Georgia for me to live in it. I wouldn't do it because if there's a breakdown of law and order and these people get uh, pissed off enough about the change up Obama promised them and they're not going to get it, they may go to freaking out here in a few months. I mean, seriously. You think about it, Obama's going to pull the troops out. He's going to do that. The only freaking change that's in Washington is his butts up there. That's the only change. Put his Clinton cronies in there. You know? See, I'm going to tell you something. They, they, they had a smooth, crafted plan. You see, the stupid Republicans is the one that put the laws on the books. Now the stupid Democrats are the one that will bring it to pass. They work it hand in hand. So I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. I don't care if you voted for John McCain. I don't care if you voted for Barack Obama. Neither one of them. I wouldn't piss in their guts if their lungs, if, if they're, if they're, I wouldn't piss down their throat if their lungs was on fire. Excuse the French, but that's just the way it is. I wouldn't do it. Because they ripped and pillaged a working American till they don't have nothing left. They kept up and held up the daggum big pharmaceutical. They kept up the banks. And now they finna bail out GM, Ford, and Chrysler. I say let it fall. I know a lot of people will be out of work, but listen to me. I say let it fall and let capitalism and the free market work itself out. That's what I say, but that's not what they're going to do. I predict that they'll bail them out some way, shape, form, or fashion, okay? Which ain't right. All they're doing is propping it up. That's all they're doing. All they're doing is propping it up. All they're doing is propping it up because it's going to fall. It is going to fall. It's going to fall. But anyway, let me move on. Okay, listen. You, I'm telling you, you don't want to be in the city. You need to get out of the city now. You need to quit that apartment, whatever you got going on. Find you somewhere in the urban area, I mean a uh, rural area, uh, and, and get out. Get out now. I'm telling you to get out now. I'm telling you to get out is what I'm telling you. If you can't get out, God bless you and God pray over you and uh, hope you make it through. But I'm telling you, you better get out of the cities. You better go. You better get out because it's going to be just like a daggum untamed pack of wolves coming out of each other, buddy, is what it's going to be. I'm telling you, it's coming. You need to get into a rural area, and you need to get yourself ready now But if it ain't too late already. I hope and pray to God it ain't. Get out of the cities now. There's some videos saying get out of America now. You know, hey, I'm telling you, it would be a whole lot easier and less finances on you to get out of the city and get in the country now because, by God, man, these houses everywhere you can get in, Glory to God, they everywhere. These people just wanting to rent them everywhere. Go, get, go rent you a house. You'd be better off out in a tent in the country than you will in that city when it hits. Okay? And I'm not advocating that you go live in a tent tomorrow. And some people are already in tents. And God help them. But uh, in any event, get out of the city now. Get out of the cities now. The big cities, get out of them. Go. But in any event, you need to create alliances with like-minded neighbors and community members that share your views. See, teamwork numbers will help in the situation. And I've got some things I've been working on in my mind with the YouTubers and the Patriots out there that uh, I don't know how to implement it without it. Because uh, you know everything we do is being watched, okay? Every video I make, every one you make is being watched. But, you know, they got me confused with somebody that gives a rip, okay? I'm trying to get it out as long as i got breath in me. If they shut me down and uh, I can't use this account anymore, then, then you'll know that the jig is up. Or if they shut you down, I'll know the jig's up. You understand? Or if they take Alex Jones and throw him in jail or kill him, or, he, or he, there's a letter with suicide on it, we know they killed him, and we'll know what to do next. But in any event, let's move on from that. All right, listen. You need to become transparent. And uh, when this thing's going, uh, becomes, uh, how should I say it? When it becomes intensified, I mean, don't go out there like some lone ranger and draw attention to yourself, okay? You see, you, you, you take care of your family, you take care of your uh, friends, and you know that you're prepared, and, and then when you have to act, you have to act. You don't go out there and draw attention to yourself, you see? I'm trying to prepare people because I know and understand that it's coming. You know, and, and the reason I believe it is because the documents that I have looked up that are credible, and uh, the number one reason because of Revelation 17 and 18, and Isaiah in chapter 24. Now, I'm a Bible believer, and I believe that God said that the uh, mystery of Babylon would be destroyed. No one will buy their goods anymore, and she'll be destroyed. And people will stand afar off wailing and weeping over her. And that is America. I don't give a flying rip. Don't send me another email saying that Babylon's a church. Listen, I, I'm going to put this out right quick like before I have to go to the next video. There is a economic... Did you hear me? There is a religious... Okay? And there is a governmental Babylon. Three. But the three are one. They're all in conjunction to destroy the American patriot. I don't want to hear your emails about this, uh, the Catholic Church. They're just one little finger on the ten 
It's actually ten toes, but they're just one finger of it. I got to go up.